Okay, hi everybody. Um, first of all, um, thanks a bunch for being here. I, I really do think this is an important deal and I hope that as time goes on we, we add to the list and we get a, a, an increasingly significant turnout in these in these get-togethers. Um, Kim, I know you're on the line and I don't see um, um, anyone else that was at the policy seminar. So Kim, if, if you want to uh, jump in here at any point, you, you feel free to do that. Um, uh, the ACTE uh, National Policy Seminar basically is a discussion of legislation and an opportunity for people to uh, to meet with their congressional representatives and, and so forth. They do some some um, light training in terms of lobbying and and how to to approach the congressional staff. Uh, and if you've not been involved in that in the past, most most of the interaction is with um, is with staff. It's not with with um, actual congressional leaders. Uh, I was only there for part of the seminar this year, um, so I'm I'm going to just hit three or four highlights very, very quickly uh, just to give you some, some context. And I, bef before I do that, I guess I, I, I want to preface my comments by saying that things are just in, in as you might anticipate, they are in incredible limbo um, in D.C. Uh, every, every speaker that, that took the podium um, had comments about the total chaos that, that um, uh, that is the the uh, legislative situation right now. A lot of different priorities, as you know, if you watch the news at all. So it's hard to get anybody's attention. Um, some really, really drastic proposals coming out of the White House in terms of of um, uh, cuts to budget and so forth. So uh, I guess the the first thing I would share with you is is the message and 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 keeping in mind that nobody has a definitive answer on what the situation really is. It, it changes just constantly. But the general theme that I heard and, and um, um, said in many different ways by many different people uh, boiled down to don't read too much into what you hear in the popular press yet. Um, you know, there's proposals all the way from eliminating the Department of Education to to dramatic cuts to funding of programs that we know and, and love, um, and everything in between. And uh, I think perhaps the the message that resonated the, the most clearly to me was that regardless of what the the Trump budget and philosophies might be. Um, that it's very, very unlikely that there will be dramatic cuts to the Department of Education and very unlikely that there will be dramatic cuts to either Perkins or the Work Workforce Investment Act or any of the other, the, the ESEA and, and the, the other legislative pieces that, that affect us directly. The more significant concern seems to be not not dollars, but but how dollars uh, can be allocated and spent and so forth. And in those areas, there there's just no real consensus on how this is going to all end up. Having said that, um, you maybe remember that the House passed a Perkins reauthorization bill last session. Um, it did not get acted on by the full Congress, didn't, didn't get um, through the Senate. Um, so as a result, there has to be a new bill uh, come forward in the House. My sense from, from what I heard was that the, the new bill is likely to be very similar to what was passed last year with some fine tuning. Um, if there are significant changes, they will be along the lines of pushing money out of the federal, out of the feds, down to the states, and on down into the to the local school districts. So that's good and bad news, depending on on where you sit and what your your philosophies are. Um, there were 
I have four general points that I think are worth you knowing about, and I'm not going to um, elaborate on them because um, because they're they're really not uh, cleanly defined just yet. But the four kind of over overarching themes that that seem to me to have direct relevance to the discussions that we've been having at the Leadership Forum and, and since um, kind of reinforce the things that, that we talked about when we were in Orlando. The first is the importance of data. Um, there, was, there were several different sessions um, focusing on the importance of having data to make your case as it relates to funding. And if you recall some of the comments in Orlando, I think that's a weak spot for us. It's it's a weak spot for education. It's a weak spot for career and technical education, although there is a lot of uh, activity in, in career and technical education generally to try and, and document impact and performance and so forth. Uh, I, I continue to believe that in as it relates to business and marketing education, we we absolutely must do a, a a better job of of documenting of of, of delivering data that support uh, and and document the effectiveness of our programs. And we won't take time tonight to talk about that, but I hope Brenda that, that down the road we can have that as an agenda item. Um, Lisa Berkey with uh, the High School of Business I think has done a terrific job of, of beginning to collect um, some some relatively informal but but nevertheless very very useful data um, as it relates to High School of Business and I think we can emulate that um, with with the broader programs and particularly if we can build out that idea of accreditation so that we can point to uh, accredited programs and have data that shows their impact on kids. Uh, I think we we um, we win. Uh, so so data, the collection of data, the 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 uh, um, the communication of of data um, needs to be a a significant point of discussion as we move forward with this whole idea of positioning business and marketing education. Second bullet point um, is business engagement. We talked about that in Orlando. It was brought up several times uh, by several different speakers in relation to both the House legislation and in terms of uh, the priority of the, of the administration. Um, I don't think I need to talk about that except again to suggest that, that it's something we need to keep on our agenda. We need to keep coming back to it. We need to do a better job of, of engaging our business community and I think parallel to that uh, is we need to document, it goes back to this data discussion, we need to document the engagement of the business community. So when we talk about things like the business coalition, we talk about things like the executive advisory network, um, as we're able to to attach um, quantita uh, quantitative data to that, it gives us um, a significantly increased leverage than perhaps what we have right now. If we could, if we could, three years from now, be able to say that we've got 153,000 um, business executives involved with us in some way, uh, I think that would be quite a statement. And and the interesting thing is, uh, some of the other um, program areas actually are, are doing a better job of, of documenting business participation than we are. Uh, I was interested just, just a day or two ago in, in our staff meeting, uh, sorry, or in our marketing committee meeting, somebody brought to the table that Skills USA claims 600 and some business people engaged in their, um, in the validation of their competitive events. Um, so we have some work to do there, but but I think that um, the things you heard in Orlando, if we can all work together to leverage that, uh, I think we get um, we, we're taking some big steps in the right direction. And I'll just I'll hitchhike on that for just one second. Um, uh, we have I think three of the four states that are on the phone right now, are on the on this webinar right now are actively pursuing 
the establishment of a of a state based business coalition, an affiliate affiliate of our business coalition for education. So, um, to me, that's a, a really exciting initiative. I see Laurie's online. Laurie's done a lot of work with that and and continues to do so. Um, so I hope that that you will keep that in the forefront of, of discussion. Third piece, a uh, third bu bullet point that I heard uh, repeatedly was all variations on proof of learning. Um, they they talked about um, um, proof of learning from, from several different perspectives, ranging from, from uh, industry-based certifications to uh, college credentials and so forth and so on. So I think we're on the right track with with the um, with the work that we're doing with proof of learning through our student organizations, through our badging um, uh, initiative, uh, through the uh, end of program and a course uh, and standards based um, uh, badging initiatives and so forth. So again, I I believe that that um, what we started a couple of years ago in response to to Perkins continues to be um, in the area of proof of learning continues to be a significant consideration. And last, um, and it kind of got buried. You have to you have to be really careful not to overlook this. Uh, I keep hammering away at this program of study thing, and they what they've done is they have they have um, sort of buried that in a one of the program standards, one of the, one of the evaluation criteria. But but they have taken quite a put quite a bit of work into it to define what they mean by program of study. Um, so we we will want to come back to that. They've they've uh, loosened the requirement a little bit in the house version. Um, they talk of uh, two course sequence in a single um, um, career area or a three course sampling of different career areas. Um, so we need to be we need to be thinking about what that means in terms of the clusters that we work with in business and marketing. Uh, I do think that that in relation, to, and, and again, I don't want to elaborate on this tonight, but one of the issues is that a student taking a two or three or four course sequence, program of study sequence, in one career cluster, a business uh, focus, if you will, is a very different animal than is a student taking two or three or four different CTE courses in different uh, career areas. It's really, really hard to document any learning outcome, any meaningful outcomes from a student who is sampling different clusters just to kind of see what they're all about. So I think one of the things we need to be concerned about is, is how do we, uh, as a profession, how do we um, encourage students to to get into to a a sequence of courses that is a logical sequence focused around business uh, business administration uh, and we're going to one of the issues we're going to have to resolve uh, in terms of data collection and reporting is the relationship between and among the three clusters that that we think are all business administration the the uh, finance, marketing, and management clusters. So, so that's enough said. I think about about DC. Unless somebody has a question or two that they'd like to um, to have addressed, um, Kim, if if um, if you uh, have additional comments, um, feel free to jump in here. This would be a good time to do it. And otherwise, I'll turn this back over to Brenda. If anyone has a question for Jim, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask him the question. Or Kim, if you have anything to add. Hey, this is Gail from North Carolina. Go ahead, yeah. Gail. Um, so you said either a two course sequence in a cluster, or you said three different courses in different clusters? I keep two things to keep in mind. One is that uh, none of this is locked down yet. This is that that is the the that that is the legislation that passed the House last year, um, and they have to start over on that. So it's not certain that they will bring that back to the table. Um, there was a lot of debate 
uh, as they as they dealt with this last year, there was a lot of debate over whether that was appropriate or not. Um, it was done partly in response to requests from local CTE directors who were having trouble keeping kids enrolled in um, a, a multi-year sequence of courses in the same career area. Uh, so the compromise was a two-course, two-credit sequence in one cluster or three credits from two or more clusters. Um, so that's that's where it was at the end of the session last year. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Thank you for clarifying. Any other oh, questions the, the, for the, Go ahead. The, the other the other thing I wanted to to uh, be sure you, you all remember the the way the Perkins law, law works and most federal legislation uh, in education is that a state plan has to work within the parameters of the of the federal legislation but it can write its own additional rules so at any given state may choose to have a a requirement that is is more rigorous than the federal legislation requires so a, any given state could require a three or four course sequence um, in order to be eligible for for Perkins funding. So those state plans um, sometimes are actually more rigorous than, than the feds require. Okay. Good question, Gail. Does anyone have additional questions for Jim? Okay, hearing none, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, we're going to look at the state updates, and I want to say to Gail and Kimberly on, on the line with us right now, um, North Carolina, I don't have your action plan, and Trey's been trying to track that down and get that to us. So if you happen to have a copy of your state action plan, um, we'd love to have you share an update with us tonight. Uh, but I didn't want to put you on a spot and thought I could hold that for the next time as needed. Um, so we, we will give you an opportunity to share if you have your state action plan with you. Um, and Dolores, I know that you have to leave after about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so Gail, that would probably leave you. So what we're going to do is just, uh, uh, I'm going to um, show a state. We're going to start with Nevada and show your your goals and just like to get a two to three minute update. I know that we're only six weeks out and you might not have done anything, um, but if you need some additional assistance, if you have reached out to some people or whatever it is that you have been able to do to move forward on your state action plan. So who's with us from Nevada? I'm here, Kim Moody. Hey, Kim, how are you? Fine, how are you? Good. So um, we left the forum quite um, energized, I would say. And um, we have not been able to do a lot on the um, state level because I think Melissa is kind of inundated at this point in time. But um, what we have been able to do is share some of the ideas that we had with some of the business and marketing teachers. So I'm not sure if everyone is aware, but prior to attending the leadership forum, we had some homework, or rather Brenda asked us to engage with business and marketing teachers and to obtain feedback about some of the strengths, opportunities, and so forth. And so um, I was able to share that information as well as um, what was uh, developed in a preliminary form as far as our state plan and to actually obtain additional comments and additional information on what that plan should look like. So pretty much we're in the baby steps, infancy stage, but conversations are continuing and um, 
we ex we don't have a exact timeline for when it will take place, but our ultimate goal, one of our main goals was to form a statewide business and marketing marketing advisory board, particularly in our state because we have uh pretty much Nevada is a smaller state and we have a dichotomy. We have um southern Nevada, which is Las Vegas, most of the program, 75% of the programs are in that area, but then we also have our other areas like Reno, which is up north in Elko and some other rural counties. So we want an action plan that is encompassing of everyone's needs. We want um, members who are aware and can give us feedback and input from all perspectives so that we're meeting all the needs of the students who are interested in business and marketing. So that's where we are. Awesome, Kim. And, you know, you said something, conversations are starting, conversations are continuing, and I think that that is, if, if anything else, what a great place to start and to start to share some of that information and to start to share those ideas out with your business and marketing teachers. So I think you've got a great start, and I think we're all going to be taking baby steps as we move forward. Um, but the key is that we continue to move forward. So thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Uh, next up is Kentucky. Nope, next up is Idaho. I don't know if Shauna joined us. Is there anyone from Idaho? No. Yeah, this is Matt from Idaho. Oh, oh good, Matt, uh, you joined us. I didn't, I didn't see you. Great, go ahead. Um, I, as you said, Shauna's not with us, and Della's. It's actually only three thirty up north where she's at, so she's probably just finishing up her school day. So, um, but what we've got is the and the setup of mapping of curriculum with standards. Um, the state level, they are working on a standard set up for both the marketing and the business uh, curriculum to where it maps into the post-secondary level and articulates both vertically and horizontally across the standards. Um, that's something that's been ongoing actually for a couple of years in our state, but it's continuing. We've been uh, we're starting with the business side this summer. We're going to be, we've started uh, in the spring here with some meetings to work on that as far as the getting some more teachers involved and actually some industry people as well. Um, the Teacher Sharing Network, we're working with our um, Business Educators Association here in the state to get that more in alignment to where we can actually use their their uh, system to help share things like we talked about a little bit there in Orlando. And the Futuring panel is something we have not yet talked about. Um, that's something we want to do um, at our state conference this summer as well as the Idaho Leadership Forum. What we're wanting to do is have a mini session that is similar to what we did there in Orlando for just some key educators and business people from our region here at our conference. And, and we've started talking about what that's going to look like, who's going to be invited and that, but we're still in the planning stages. So. Okay, terrific. Matt, Matt um, um, just one comment. I talked with Shauna yesterday, uh, two comments. I talked with Shauna yesterday and she and Donna Orr uh, and our staff are working to get this futuring panel in place. Uh, we may not be able to do it in August. We're, we're toying with the idea of doing it in, um, in February in conjunction with um, uh, the Western Region NBEA conference. Okay. But either way, one way or the other, it looks like the futuring panel is going to happen. And then just, just uh, as an aside, um, it looks like uh, your state director of current technical education, Dwight, um, is going to be joining our board um, this summer, so oh, that's awesome. uh, we're we're excited to have that happen. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that one, so that's that's news to me, and that's exciting. Well, and, and to that's just Brad hot hot off the press. Uh, we just we just got the uh, 
the final okay uh, early yesterday morning. So, yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Sounds like you are uh, working hard. I love that idea of taking that leadership forum framework back to your state. Um, and really bringing your own leaders along. I think that's a great idea. So, and excited to have a futuring panel in Idaho. Thank you for reporting out. Next Thank up you. is Kentucky. Betty, are you with us or someone else from Kentucky that'd like to report out? Betty, we can't hear you. I see that you are unmuted, and but we can't hear you. So um, I'm going to move on and come back to you and see if we can't. Or if we can't hear, hear you, you could always type into the chat, and I could read that for you. I'm not sure what's happening with your microphone. Okay. Or you could call in. Thank you, Phil. Betty, you could also call in um, if you're not able to to be able to use that. Um, if you're not able to talk to us through your microphone, is anyone here from Colorado? Didn't see anyone initially. I am here. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead, Natalie. I think that's okay. Natalie's voice. It is. It is. Okay. Wonderful. Um, okay. So uh, we actually just had a um, big meeting with uh, secondary schools as well as um, two-year and four-year colleges. So it was a, a big gathering that we had, um, and we discussed how how to create a um, a pathway that is that students can use through the high school get community college credit as well as four year college credit um, in, instead of what we have right now where they're getting community college credit or they're doing a course for four year college credit but it's not transferable to a lot of the other schools so right now um, our secondary concurrent enrollment is a student wants to go to a four-year college, um, they'll get sophomore credit, but or they'll get credit to become a sophomore, but they're elective credits. So they're still going to have to do all the coursework, but we want to be able to make it count for them. So we had a big meeting on that. Uh, Dana has started her blog communication, so she sent out one communication already uh, via blog. So she's going to be releasing another one here shortly. She's um, been pulled in since some and FBLA stuff. Um, and then. Go ahead, Natalie. But it sounds like we had some. Okay. And then. Um, um, what else do we have? Um, the shelves of the classes, we started uh, a Google Drive. We're going to look at a different system to put uh, shelves out for teachers so that we can share work, um, share ideas for projects. It's a lot easier throughout, the, uh, throughout Colorado. And then um, looking down, the other one, creating. Um, so, and the other part I already talked about, about our meeting and trying to recreate the business and marketing classes so that they, uh, tra the transferability to uh, college credit is uh, more accurate. Awesome. Thank you. So, so you've already started down the road of um, really working on a couple of these. Um, that articulation, that alignment, 
that blog communication that Dana has already started. So that's wonderful. Um, have you have you had these secondary two and four year college meetings where you've tried to get that college credit transferred before, or is this a new step in your process? Um, this is a new step for us. We we have our different schools have different articulation agreements with our mm -hmm. community colleges, um, and some have. Um, some uh, somewhat articulation agreements with four-year colleges, um, such as fees, fees, etc. But it's not as available to a lot of the schools. Mm -hmm. So this this meeting was a new one for us, where we had all three areas together in one room discussing stuff. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, no Betty, Betty was going to try to call in. Betty, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to go backwards here. Okay. I have lost my uh, video, so I cannot see the plan. Okay. So how about if I just tell you what the plan is? If I can get back to it. Here we go. Kentucky. Um, so you wrote that you were going to plan PD offering, and then you had in parentheses and in capital letters. Um, TUT. I wasn't sure what that was for curriculum builder. Um, yeah. You were, and then brand. You were going to work on spreading the news of being an enhanced member state. You wanted to develop a regional leadership network. Um, you wanted to work on proof of learning and develop a practice COSA. Um, you wanted to send emails to the principal and other stakeholders for your teachers. There were a leadership forum, and you wanted to establish a teacher sharing network. Okay, so I do have some things I can share out. Of course, I did. Um, I did immediately return to Kentucky and. Um, contacted the super direct supervisors and principals and CTE director of the district to thank them for um, allowing their teachers to participate in the leadership forum and immediately did get some some very nice responses um, we have I have met with some teachers since the uh, leadership forum to start establishing uh, more uh, detailed state action plan and one of our goals is the branding for Kentucky uh, we've already started that path um, in the last two years we have developed a curriculum task force of business and marketing teachers which ha did, did come together in Kentucky uh, we, we did have 24 career pathways in business and marketing which was narrowed down to nine pathways that really had the same courses. Um, business and marketing really never sit in the same room together, like at our summer conference. So we are having a uh, brunch with all of us sitting in the same room. Uh, we have a guest speaker that addresses the whole group of business and marketing teachers, which has really, I think, helped to try to start that path of branding. Um, both there is a marketing teacher of the year and a business teacher of the year announced during that brunch and um, they receive awards. Um, also we do have round tables at our summer conference which we identify three sort of marketing related sessions and three business related sessions they all sit in the same room so you know sometimes the business teachers will go over to the what has been viewed as marketing and marketing will go over to what has been viewed as business only business in the past they're really starting to come together and share ideas and really see like they're they're more alike than they are really different so I really think we are making some good strides there um, we are offering professional development opportunities uh, with just 
um, focusing on enhanced membership this year, and TUT does stand for Technical Upgrade Training here in Kentucky. Okay. Awesome. Thank so, you so um, much, Betty. Okay. Um, huge to bring business and marketing teachers in some states. They still are very separate. And bringing mm -hmm. them together is a significant change. So I think you've you've got a couple of great ideas. I mean, a, a brunch is really kind of a non-threatening. Let's have let's just eat together, right? And you mm -hmm. start small, and you uh, start to bring them together. And as you said, we have way more things in common than we have differences. Um, we are one family, right? Right. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. And I'm going to try to get my non-cooperative. There we go. Um, do we have anyone from Iowa on the line? Yes, I'm here. This is Kyle. Awesome. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for hey. thanks for being here. Would you like yeah. to give a report out? Yeah. I, um, I probably don't have things in the order that they're on the screen, but... Uh, we did have a, a uh, an I, IBEA executive board meeting March 4th after we got back from Orlando uh, to talk about the state of business in the state of Iowa and, and talked about you know, the uh, things that we discussed as a state and as a forum in Orlando. We also had our IBEA planning committee meeting afterwards, uh, so we're... Um, it definitely started a conversation with uh, business teachers here in Iowa about the importance of uh, not settling for the status quo, but looking to advance us, uh, you know, five years from now and ten years from now as well. A at the local level, we, we are having our regional business advisory council meeting on April fourth. Uh, that's a that's a local thing. We will also be talking about the action plan for the state of Iowa. Uh, with our stakeholders there uh, at, at the local level. Uh, myself, who's the IBEA president, and Andrew Thonstad, who's the president-elect, have both written newsletter articles um, stressing the importance to Iowa business teachers to get involved, um, talking about all the stakeholders, not just the students, but the school board administration, the parents, and our business partners. Um, and reminding them about MBA's willingness to help us. Uh, we have, um, we're in the process of updating our website, our webmaster. She and I have spoken on several occasions since the uh, leadership forum, and, and we've seen the prototype, and it's awesome, uh, which you know, will make it easier for our business teachers to uh, see what's going on with IBEA here in the state of Iowa. Um, we also have gotten our first um, highlight, which is the bottom bullet point, um, mm -hmm. from a, a longtime business teacher. She she's written an article and it's published on our um, IBEA website. And it was also in Kelly Deemer's um, newsletter um, as well. So uh, we have a little more work to do than some of the other states. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to take care of some of these e easy easy things first and uh, I, I feel that we've really uh, addressed several of our action plan steps uh, since we've met in Orlando. That's wonderful. Sometimes it's easy to you know to grab that low-hanging fruit and see some movement and get yourself going and but it sounds like you've been doing a lot since you uh, left Orlando, Florida and I'm sure are going to continue to do a lot more. So um, this highlight that you did, um, is that an article about a business or um, you have someone who is writing that for you and then providing those for Kelly so you have teachers in the field doing that for you? Uh, yeah, we, we um, chose a, a teacher. She uh, taught at the high school level now teaches at the community college level, Sandra O'Brien, and she is, she's written like a three-page, uh, not a three-page, uh, excuse me, a three-paragraph <laughs> article about her and, and why she chose to get involved in IBA, trying to spur uh, interest from our non-members and Wonderful. get them involved. 
Good, good. Um, Tammy, I see you. I don't want to put you on the spot. I see you're here from North Carolina, and I don't know if you have a copy of the North Carolina's um, action plan or not. I do not. Okay. All right. Well, Trey has been uh, trying to track that down. Um, he thought that Dolores or possibly Amy had that. So we'll we'll have you report out at the next meeting. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. Thank you. So um, we have one of the things we talked about at Leadership Forum was providing support out to um, the people that were there. And so you see the staff assignments here. Um, and then I'll also, for anyone who came from a state but didn't bring a team, I'm certainly there to support you. So um, I know that Chris is on the line from Oregon, and I think Nadine from Ohio. I think we've got some Michigan people online as well. Um, please, as you're looking at your action plans, um, as you're thinking about and, and maybe need some more support or point in a direction to someone within your state, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. But we will be contacting um, each of the states that had a team on, at least on a monthly basis, be reaching out to you to see how we can continue to support you and help you to complete that action plan. Um, or if you add to your action plan, complete some other things as well. So I wanted to, to give our other states who are here, um, if you have anything to report out, um, Michigan, I think we have Michigan and Ohio here, anything to report out on your action plans, you don't necessarily need to do that, but if you'd like to. Okay, so you actually gave us a four-page no, pages of notes and an action plan and so I tried to pick some of those things and wanted to talk to you um, and we'll we'll bring some of these action plan items that you charged us with to each of our webinars so that while you know that you're working out in your state know that we're working just as hard in our office um, to support you as well. Um, we spent a lot of time at the leadership forum talking about branding, gathering your ideas. Kyle asked if he can get the email address. That's a great idea. We will get those out to you, Kyle. Um, talking about brand is branding, and, and we continue to have those conversations um, in our office, and we, can, we are continuing to move forward on that as well. Um, one of the things that you were loud and clear about was that states need help, and I think Jim addressed that. Uh, when he was talking with Shauna, he's, uh, we are going to be going into Idaho and doing some futuring panels. Um, but as you need support for business engagement, if you want to hear what other uh, things that you, we know that other states are doing or other local districts are doing in terms of business engagement, um, we'll be sharing that information. As we get information from each of you, we'll share that out with everyone else. And then as we hear things across the country as well, and of course, Jim on that national level continues to uh, stay focused to see what's happening with business engagement. Um, in terms of the standards, um, one of the things that um, you asked us to do was to provide some additional training. Uh, we are working on um, putting together some webinars, short webinars, because we know teachers um, probably aren't going to listen to, sit and listen potentially to a full one hour webinar, um, but we're going to do some shorter webinars around those standards. At Conclave, that'll be one of our focus areas to provide some additional training. And certainly in your states, if you are interested in having us either distance, do some training with your teachers and standards, or um, you can always invite us to your conference as well, uh, and, and if it works for both of us, we can, we can do some training on site as well. 
You've asked for some more training videos on the Learning Center. Uh, my professional development team has started to put those together. And I've begun working on uh, two one-pagers on how to use the Learning Center in the labs. I'm hoping that those will be uh, finished and ready to go mid to late April, um, really reducing those that early list of instructions down to a, a more manageable one page or maybe slightly more than one page that's going to get people up and running faster on the Learning Center. Um, and then one of the really, I thought was a really cool idea was some one pagers on how people can use labs. Um, so I may be reaching out to some of our teachers that are on the line here and then teachers on our teacher advisory network and asking for your your favorite, if you use LAPS, what's your favorite LAP, how do you use it, how do you deliver that lesson plan um, so that we can share it with other teachers so we're not all recreating the same lesson plans. Let's, let's use each other's creativity. You loved the ethic course guides and the way that they were laid out. Um, April was excited about that. I don't know if you caught that at the Leadership Forum, but all of our course guides will now follow that model as you recommended um, for course guides. Um, we've, we feel that they were a lot easier to read. That's what you continued to tell us. We are working um, to um, focus on assessments. You wanted more opportunities for teachers to take those assessments. We started last year at Conclave offering those assessments at Conclave. We're going to do more of that this year so that if you are at Conclave, um, you'll be able to take some of those assessments. And we're going to be working on um, some webinars. Tammy Cyrus actually did a really good webinar on digital badging that's on our YouTube channel, MBA Research YouTube channel, if you search that. Um, but our PD team will be doing some additional um, webinars as well that, that people will be able to access. And we'll make sure we get those links out to you so that you can share them through your state associations. Um, or if you need additional support or information to share within your states, please do not hesitate um, to contact us and, and we can certainly do that for you. And we've been having conversations back in our office a little bit about make that website easier to use. Know that that's, that's on our horizon. It's not on our, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, but we do want to make sure that as we are branding the profession, the MBA research really focuses on what's going to help, um, help us help you uh, make your life easier. And one of those things is a more manageable, easier to use website to navigate. Um, so we, we know that, that that we need to do some work in that area. So looking ahead, um, we're going to do two more webinars with the group, um, April 19th and May 23rd. Uh, I believe Annie from our office sent that information out so you can get registered for that. We'll remind you again as they come closer um, that we'll have those two webinars. I want to um, take a little bit of time. I don't know why I typed Iowa at the top up there. But that's really not Iowa. It's really questions. Does anyone have questions for us as a staff or have questions for each other? Something you heard tonight that you were intrigued by or you want to learn more about? Um, Kyle, I will certainly get you that list of email addresses. But any other questions, you could unmute yourself and ask that question. Can you hear me, Chris Morgan? Yes. Hi, Chris. Hello. Um, you guys said you would come out to do trainings in states. Uh, is, that a, is there a charge for that, or are you guys amazing and come out and stay for free? Well, my boss is on the line or I'd probably say we would just come for free. But usually we ask that you <laughs> that um, you pay our expenses. Um, and remember, we will be out there for Conclave as well. Thank you. Yes. We, we have a uh, conference that we do with uh, teachers uh, uh, in the fall. And it's a different conference that might not 
all make it to con concave. But uh, just a, a thought, maybe if if it works out to get some uh, additional support and information out to the teachers, and that's my goal in our area. Okay, certainly. Yeah, just um, send me an email, Chris, and yep. uh, we can work together on that. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions for the staff or for each other? Yes, yeah, this is Kyle. Since you put Iowa up there, I'll have Iowa ask a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, different elements, different parts of the MBA websites, Curriculum Builder, States Connection, uh, you know, maybe a couple others. Um, how about a universal access rather than having different logins to get to the different feet, uh, parts of the websites and the programs? Is that something that you guys are considering? Or is it, have you already done it and I just missed it? Well, we haven't done it yet, and it's certainly something that um, I, I, for one, of course, I can't speak for my entire organization. I think that's a, that's where we need to go so that it, it's a real easy to get into our website and then to maneuver around there. We just have a lot of different parts that um, we need to pull together. We need to figure it out. Yeah. All right. So, Bill, our tech guy said, easier said than done, but we certainly, it is right, it is in the forefront, and we know that we need to do something. As we try to encourage business teachers to use MBA, you know, that, that's a bit cumbersome right now, having mm -hmm. different logins for, you know, the different parts. I'd absolutely agree with you. Uh, Kim didn't have a question, but she said... Um, she found the update about legislation very informative that Jim shared. Please continue to have an update as the environment continues to change and the media does not always seem to share information correctly. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, this is Matt from Idaho. Hi, um, Matt. Hello. I just have a question and it may be there. I just haven't found it yet, but did we ever get the um, PowerPoint and information from Orlando posted up there on the MBA research page? No, we have not done that yet, um, but we, I, I will tell you, I am going, I will work on that. We had some data and information. We wanted to make sure that we had images. It was, you know, it's copyright and some images we were checking on, and I I know it has not been posted, so we will work on that in the next couple of weeks and take care Brenda. of that for you. Uh, Brenda, just um, we did send uh, we did email. Oh, we did the um, the the data that we the, the the basic data we emailed right after the conference, um, okay. and the the next piece that we're it'll get on the website here sooner rather than later. To be honest, I forgot about it. Um, the other thing we're going to do is a series of posters um, that that you all can download and, and uh, just print locally and add your own little bits and pieces to them. So those will be out sometime in the, sp in the late spring. Okay, I, I was just looking for some of that data. I'll have to go back through my email stuff and see if maybe I just missed it. And if it's not there, just email me and I'll get it back out to you. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, this is Betty from Kentucky, and one of the teachers that was at the leadership forum, she immediately printed off that da data and shared that within her school and within her district. So it, it really made an impact there, uh, you know, really talking about the percentage of um, um, STEM versus the number of job openings. So. That was some powerful data for, for my teachers to have in their hands. I thank you for that. Good. Thank you, Betty. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Well, I want to echo Jim's uh, comment to say thank you for all of the leadership you're providing. Um, not only on behalf of your state, but for us as well. Uh, this is a powerful group, and 
Um, I appreciate you staying after school, staying late at night, going home, eating dinner really quickly, and getting back online with us. I look forward to talking to you again April 19th. Um, we'll make sure Jim's got some more information to share with you um, at that point in time, and we'll continue to move these conversations forward as um, you continue to impact people in your state and impact us and, and help us to drive what we're doing to make, to make life a little better for all of us. So thank you. You guys have a great night. Um, this is recorded. It will be posted on MBA Research YouTube tomorrow. So if you need to go back to any part of it, including Jim's piece and want to grab some information, you'll be able to do that starting tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.